Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the Festival of Pentecost. We have the beautiful red up and you know see lots of you wearing red today. So again, we give thanks to God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have a couple of other things that are going to be happening today. Uh, The first one is that, uh, again, we're going to be installing the call committee. And so thank you, call committee members, for being here this morning. Um, The other thing that we're going to be doing today is that during the passing of the piece, my wife has a machine called a cricket, and it cuts out shapes, and so she cut out tongues of fire, and then she put a dove on those tongues of fire. And during the passing of the piece, you'll be each receiving a tongue of fire to remind you that each and every one of you has been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, Also, today, during the second lesson, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, we're going to have the second lesson in more than one language. And so again, I I give thanks to um, Marilyn Anderson. She's going to be doing Swedish. I'm going to be doing German. And uh, Carol will be doing the English part. And again, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that just before that lesson you'll notice in your bulletin this morning that instead of the confession and forgiveness that we normally do, that today we're going to do Thanksgiving for baptism. So if you will rise and face the bowl back here, and Datha, if you will join me here, and there's the picture of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, joined to Christ in waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. 
Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We join now in singing our opening hymn, Spirit of Gentleness.
from the bondage of sorrow, all the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, free from blessedness, with wind on the sea. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <coughs> In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. You are seen. Let us pray together. God, our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. 
And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one had heard them speaking in the native language of each. <laughs> Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and res residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsively as printed in our bulletin from Psalm 104, selected verses. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. It is the sea, great and high. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. And look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Marilyn, would you please join us? I'm going to give you a microphone. In the first reading that Carol read to us, you will notice that it said that they heard in many different languages. We really don't know whether um, the disciples spoke in their own language and through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the people heard their own language. Or the other way, we don't know whether, again, the Holy Spirit gave the disciples each the gift to speak languages that they had never learned. The thing that we do know, it says, is that each person heard in their own language. I will be reading in German, Meryl will be in Swedish, and Carol in English. And so we'll see once if you can focus in on the language that you grew up with. So Carol, would you introduce the reading? Okay, the second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. 
Denn welche that der Geist Gottes treibt, die God sind Gottes Kinder. Denn ihr habt nicht einen knechtischen Geist empfangen, dass ihr euch abermals fürchten müsstet, sondern ihr habt einen kindlichen Geist empfangen, durch welchen wir rufen, aber lieber Vater. Der Geist selbst gibt Zeugnis unserem Geist, dass wir Gottes Kinder sind. Sind wir aber Kinder, so sind wir nämlich Gottes Herben, damit wir mit Christi, mit ihm, so denn anders mit wir leiden, auf das wir auch mit zur Herrlichkeit erhoben werden. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world uh, gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Piper and Sloan, would you mind joining me up here? You want to sit over on this side if you don't mind. Good morning. Yeah. So, we have a special day today. Did you hear the name talked about or read? Can you tell me what it is? Pentecost. Very good. And uh, again, what color kind of seems to be red? Yeah. Why do you think we picked red for the color for Pentecost? Yes, very good, because it's red, because flame, fire, is red, right? And on the day of Pentecost, they were gathered together, and, and, and in the reading, it said there was fire among them. They were in a circle. Can you imagine what that was like? All of a sudden, to see fire? It'd be kind of scary, wouldn't it? And then all of a sudden, it ended up on top of their heads. Yeah. Most of us would run, wouldn't we? Yeah. So... What was that a symbol of? Well, it was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. We know about God the Father who created the world, right? We know about Jesus who came and died for us. But today we celebrate the Holy Spirit who opens our ears and our hearts to receive the message of God the Father and God the Son. So that's why we celebrate. And so in my sermon, I'm going to talk about that there's also some gifts 
that the Holy Spirit gives to us that the God the Father didn't give and that Jesus didn't give and that help us to live as Christians, okay? Let's pray. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you sent through your Son the gift of the Spirit. It came to us in our baptism and it continues to come to us these, this gift of the Spirit. Help, Lord, that us to realize that the Spirit leads and guides our faith lives. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming up and joining me. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Pentecost people, in the first lesson that Carol read this morning, we have this story with a rushing wind. We have the disciples being accused of being drunk. Um, we have fire. I mean, this is quite, quite the deal, right? And so often, you know, that's what we pastors focus in on. But I think if we do, and we should mention it, and again, like I talked to, to the young ladies about it, but I think that what we miss is what's in our gospel lesson today, and that's the function of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's amazing that when the Holy Spirit comes, there's change, there's, there's amazing things happening. But what we don't realize and what we forget is that the Holy Spirit is in for the long haul. For six weeks now, actually seven, because today is the seventh Sunday after Easter, we have been talking about Jesus. We have had this candle called the Christ candle, the Paschal candle, the resurrection candle, it has different names. We've been lighting that to remind us of Jesus' resurrection. But today, with the coming of the Holy Spirit, will be the last time that this candle will be here it, to that, it will be moved over here to the baptismal font because we burn that candle every time there's a baptism. Also, every time there's a funeral, it's moved down to where either the, the body or the cremains are at as a symbol of resurrection. But we have now 24 weeks of the season after Pentecost. It is there that we learn what the true gift of the Holy Spirit is. Notice in here it says, I will send the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name who will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit doesn't teach and preach anything brand new. He's, the Holy Spirit is there to remind us of what Jesus taught to remind us that we already know a lot of this stuff, but we forget it. Those of you that have gone through confirmation class, do you remember everything that the pastor taught you? If you are, you're remarkable, because I even myself don't remember everything. I have to be refreshed every once in a while. And that's it. It's a refreshing. That's why we have those 26 weeks, because that's the time that pastors use to remind you of all that Jesus taught. And so Pentecost is important for that reason. But also, also, it says in there that, that he will send an advocate. In Greek, it's lawyer. Someone who pleads for you. Someone who's, you know, out there always pleading your case to God, to the Savior. This Holy Spirit, we first encounter the Holy Spirit at the baptismal font. How do we know that? Because the pastor takes oil and says, I mark, uh, seal you with the gift of the Holy Spirit and mark you with the Christ, cross of Christ forever. The gift of the Holy Spirit comes to us at the baptismal font. But again, on our confirmation day, there's a laying on of hands and a prayer for, again, an expansion of the gift of the Spirit. And we name those gifts when we do that. And then again, every time that we come to the communion table, the Holy Spirit comes along with Christ 
in the bread and the wine. So what are those special gifts? And you know what? I've been preaching and teaching and whatever for years, but when it comes to those seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, I always seem to leave one out, so I'm going to have my list today to help me out. What is it that when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, what is the special gifts? First one is wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings us wisdom. And in fact, in the Old Testament, it was called the spirit of wisdom. And again, to make us wise, not to the ways of the world, but wise to the ways of God and Christ especially. Understanding. You know, how many times have you heard someone preach on the same text and every once in a while you go, ah, I get it. I finally understand it. That's again the Holy Spirit at work in you to understand. Counsel, the gift of counsel. That means that you can take what you have learned, what you have understood, and the wisdom that you've been given that you can pass it on to others in counsel. Fortitude. My father always used the term intestinal fortitude, guts. You know, you need to have that to get through the toughness in life. And, and the Holy Spirit says, yeah, I agree. And so the Holy Spirit gives us a measure of, of intestinal fortitude, of, of guts, that we can make it through all the problems of life. Knowledge. The Holy Spirit is the one who, as we go through and we have Bible study, that that knowledge, it, that we're open to that. Remember what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit in, in this text? He said, the world does not know the Spirit because the world doesn't see the Spirit. That's the gift that the Holy Spirit gives us through knowledge that we can see. Piety. Well, you know, so often we think of pious people as the ones hands folded and goody two-shoes and whatever, but that's not what the gift of piety is with the Holy Spirit. The gift of piety is that you're able to take all of the things that you've learned and to actually live it, to make it a part of who you are. And the last one is the fear of the Lord. Yes, there's some of that I'm afraid of God because, you know, I've done bad and, and God says there's a hell and whatever. Yes, that's a part of it. But the other in Greek word for fear is awe. That we, through the gift of the Holy Spirit, can say, wow, what a wonderful God we have. Oh, he creates all of this stuff. Did you notice uh, uh, the psalmist says God has a sense of humor? The Leviathan it was the word for the dinosaur says he made it for his sport. He made it because he wanted to make people laugh. So again, this is a part of this awesome God that we have. So we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us, through our baptism, through if we have been confirmed, or through the gift of, of Eucharist. But what it does, again, is that it ensures the church. You see, these are the gifts that the church needs to thrive. Luther, again, says, you know, in the third article, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Christ my Lord or come to him, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how we use the power of the Spirit to spread the message to others so they, too, may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost, Pentecost, festival of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just one day. It's our entire lives. So we give thanks on this day for this gift of the wonderful presence of the Spirit. But notice that the most important is, it says, the Spirit of truth. You see, it's from the Spirit that we're able to discern the truth and to discern what is not truth. Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us, make us alive today and every day. Amen. 
And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The hymn that we're about to sing, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine, again, talks about all of those things that happened in that first lesson and in our gospel. So please rise and let us sing Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. may be seated. At this time, we install the following persons as the call committee of St. John's Lutheran Church. And as I read your names, please come forward. Susan Stolzenberg, Trent Davis, Amy Runquist, Becky Baird, Carmen Gerard, Bonnie Anderson, North MacArthur, and Stan Vaughn. And if you will all on this side, please. As we celebrate and install these leaders, we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit as it will reveal itself to us through their work as they discern candidates for the call to be pastor of this congregation. To the members of the call committee, on behalf of this congregation and with the support of the staff of the Central State Synod, you are being charged with listening faithfully and searching diligently for the person whom God has chosen to shepherd this congregation in the coming years. Are you now prepared to accept the responsibility and exercise your ministry faithfully and in accordance with the will of the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we will with God's help. We will, with God's help. will you consistently search the mind of God through prayer and conversation with one another, always seeking to do God's will rather than your own. Will you continue to pray for this community of faith and listen diligently to the people of God as they seek to discern God's will in this process? Will you pledge to work with them in a spirit of joyful anticipation as you look forward to a new partnership in the gospel? Will the congregation please stand? People of God, will you support and encourage these people in the ministry for which they are called this day? If so, then answer, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. 
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Creative and redeeming God, we will call upon you to empower these leaders for the special ministry upon which they embark this day. Grant them your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, Lord, in your mercy. Holy Living One, Holy Moving One, burst open our locked doors, and by your Spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the Advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy. Feed and care for the creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy. Your prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. Please pray with me, those on our prayer list. Dwayne, Dwayne Wallace, Wallace, Mark Gruenthal, Karen, Karen Riedel, Riedel, Bob Young, Tom, Tom Jones, Jones, Pat, Pat Brown, Brown, Terry Moyer, Susan Veneri, Jessica Wilcox, Donna Speth, Dr. Dr. Ali Mangudna, Violet Fisher, Fisher Emily Pinkston, Calvin Bonard, Dan Engel, Terry Hauschel, Sean Loder, Linda Robbins, Marsha Berg, Michelle Brack, Judd Hardy, Megan Carrazzo Peoples, Jesse Martinez, Reverend Bill Peterson, Pam Dietz, Todd Pittenger, Kathy Chapin, Wesley Schultes, Mike and Joan Plunkett, and Sarah Rahman. We pray for the call committee as they search for a new pastor at St. John's. We pray for Ukraine and ask for peace and an end to, of the conflict. We pray for those communities affected by violence, especially Robb Elementary School in Texas. We pray for our shut-in friends and soldiers serving around the world. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel as you did for Boniface, whom we commemorate today. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root, out common life, root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Today, I talked about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm now going to give you a pin that depicts the Holy Spirit giving out the seven gifts. I ask that you wear this as long as you are serving on the call committee. Excuse me. I want you to take a look at the pin real quickly that you can see, again, the gift of the Spirit. Now, I ask that you please kneel. I bless you for service in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I bless you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I bless you 
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I bless you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose spirit moved upon the waters and earth was created, who knit us together in our mother's womb, grant that these people of God may be strengthened for their service and empowered with your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to arise, turn and face the congregation. Please welcome your call committee. You may return to your seats. I ask that you please rise, and we now profess our Christian faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was under death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's now extend a sign of Christ's peace to one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I'm going to go all the way to the back, and I'll work my way back, and each of you take a side. The peace of Christ be with you. 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 <laughs> That's going to come out. <laughs> the peace of Christ be with you. 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 Has everyone received a... Okay. The peace of Christ be with you. 
The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Okay. Is everyone? <laughs> Everybody get? Okay. Please be seated. We will receive our offering at this time. Please rise. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the peace to come. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. 
fulfilling the promise of the resurrection. You pour out the spirit, fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. O Christ, our good shepherd, be among us this day in the breaking of the bread and sharing of the cup. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin.
If you are a guest for communion, if you will come forward, pick up an empty glass, come to the rail, you can either stand or kneel. So, come forward. body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen.
Please rise. And now, may the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you for the remission of all your sins, strengthen and preserve and keep you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raise, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? Susan, I didn't forget, but I did. <laughs> she wanted to do a temple talk at the beginning, so if you want to come on up. So the transition committee has recently completed a significant step in the call process the completion of our ministry site profile. And these profiles are available for you to read at your discretion. Um, they are in the office. We also have a copy of a document called The Seven Reflections, um, and it is also in the office for you to read it as you wish. This profile and information will be used by the bishop and the staff to identify candidates to refer to your newly installed call committee. More importantly, is used by the candidates themselves to learn about the mission and the ministries at St. John's Lutheran Church. Um, along with um, St. John's Lutheran Church, the profile includes um, a description of our expectations for um, a lay pastor, or I'm sorry, a pastor, a rostered leader. Um, and this in information, this description was prepared on the based on the information that we received from the surveys and the conversations that we had with everyone during the transition team's work. So with these expectations in mind, we are giving you the opportunity to submit, to submit names for any ELCA pastors with whom you feel should be contacted by the bishop and the call committee regarding our congregation. Um, I will have referral forms available alongside... Okay. Pastor has referral forms available, <laughs> and you may ask him for any of them at his, um, if you would um, be willing to use them. Um, and if to preserve confidentiality, please ma mail the form to um, myself. My address is in the directory, or you could give them to um, Pastor in a sealed envelope. Once your referral is made, please support the confidentiality and the integrity of the call process by allowing the call committee and the Senate to have exclusive contact with the candidate for any matters related to our congregational call. Thank you for your continued support and prayers for the call committee. We will continue to keep you updated on our progress towards the calling of a pastor for our congregation. Thank you. I just want to make a quick comment, and that is, if you visited a congregation and you enjoyed a pastor and you think they would make a good fit for St. John's, that's what this referral form is for. And so you can come and get one, and again, but it's done confidentially because the pastor at his congregation may not want people to know that, that they're being contacted. So again, that's what Susan is trying to say in there as well. So let us please rise as we... Pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We join in singing Spirit of God. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. From earth, throw all its faults as low. Stoop to my 
Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. 